Hey guys, so do you know somebody who's gone through a breakup? How about a couple that is losing the fire? Good news, the human relationship expert, Dr. Gary Chapman, has shared with us the secrets to repair and maintain perfect relationships. In today's video, we're going to talk about the five different languages of love and how to refill anyone's love tanks, rekindle that fire, and avoid unnecessary fights, tears, and heartache. By the end of this video, hopefully you'll realize that there are many ways of seeing things. And even though people may seem like thieves, with the right amount of love and care, they can turn around and actually turn out to be saints. Essentially, we all have a primary way in which we want to receive love. But over time, the things we need will evolve and based on life experiences, will change. Learning new love languages is like learning any language. It takes practice, patience, and the rewards are extremely great once we master them. Life tends to get a bit easier, if you will. Not to mention that loving each other is just as essential to our relationships as meals are essential to our health. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. How about you? Let's roll that intro. So we've heard about all couples where they have lasted the test of time, but really what keeps them together? What's that substance? What's that glue? Everything's so tight together that no matter what harsh weather comes our way, nothing can break them apart. Some may think it's a match made in heaven. Others might see it as they just get each other. I'm here to tell you that fundamentally, these couples leverage the five languages of love knowingly or unknowingly. Those are works of affirmation, quality time, receive gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. And because great communication and genuine care and willingness to put effort and learn these new habits, their love tanks are full. But how do you fill those love tanks, Alex? Great question. I'm glad you asked. Imagine humans are like cars, and that they need special mixtures of the five different love languages to bring out the best in them. In order for the car to run smoothly, generate the greatest amount of power, and stay in great condition, you need to have the right amount of mixtures. I mean, it's obvious that a car cannot run on empty, and just like there is no universal gas for all types of cars, we need to identify how one loves and feels emotionally satisfied in order to fix and maintain a healthy relationship. I mean, imagine if you put diesel into a gas car. That probably wouldn't work so well. So let's look at what we can do and what we can work with. Love language number one, words of affirmation. Some people truly value and need spoken words of positivity. Things like, I love you, or I value you, or I appreciate you. You get them. These are the ones that need you to express your emotions verbally in order for them to feel loved. Not good at doing this? Nope. No problem. Like any skill, this can be learned. Expressing emotions with your partner will create openness and new habits will form as you continue to practice. It's important to remember that emotions aren't good or bad. They're simply the way our body reacts to situations. How to fill this kind of person's love tank, the one that relies on affirmations of love. Journaling is a great way of capturing emotions on paper, keeping a historical record of how you actually feel. So write them down, good or bad, it doesn't matter because either way you wanna be constructive. Journal the compliments you give them, journal the complaints that you wanna tell them, and talk it through. Don't criticize. Be constructive. Criticism and demand tends to drive wedges, and love cannot be demanded. It should only be requested in a significant manner that matters most to the receiver. You can also jot down all the feelings you had each day in word or two to maybe jog your memory. Then go over what you wrote and with your partner have a deep conversation Look at each other eye to eye and talk about what's going on and how you can improve the relationship. Love language number two, 
quality time. Some people value the quality time versus the quantity and crave that partner to be completely present. Did you know that an average human actually can only listen about 17 seconds before wanting to interrupt and talk? We as humans are far more versed in speaking than listening. And if you haven't already, go check out my video, I'll put a link up here or in the description below, on how to connect with anybody. And let me know what you think. Hopefully it works out for you and you'll learn 10 different ways on how to have deep conversations that will fill any quality time lover's tank. It's important to be truthful and respectful and let them know that if you aren't ready to listen, it's okay to postpone the conversation. When you aren't in the right headspace, you want to give them service and don't make chalk cheap. So how to fill a quality timer's love time? One person has to want to do that particular activity with you. Two, the other person has to be willing to engage. And three, both people need to know that they're doing this for a reason. What's the why? Why are you even spending time together in order to fill those emotional love tanks? The fastest way to fill in these love tanks is to ask powerful questions. I feel most loved by my partner when... Dot, dot, dot. Write it down and hand it to the other partner. Stick it on their fridge, place it in their wallets, I don't know, tattoo it on their arm if you have to, just to keep it on top of their mind. And I guarantee you, by doing this, you're going to get a lot out of it. Love language number three, receiving gifts. In some cultures, symbolic items or gifts of love have huge importance. A gift is something usually that you can hold, and he or she is going to think that, oh, I remember that person, or someone special gave it to me. The cost really won't matter as much, since gifts can be found, purchased, or made. Typically, perceived value depends on your financial situation. And you have to be aware that when the gifts are extremely out of line with what you can afford, the person is probably going to perceive it as something off or wrong or cheap. Visual symbols have different importance to some than to others. This is why wedding rings uh -huh, have a, such a profound meaning and importance for particular peoples just like this. Remember. People have different primary languages. And how to fill a gift receiver's love tank? Well, when you're with them, make a note. Write things down and listen to them when they say, I wish I had this, while you're strolling in a mall with them. Write them a handwritten note, maybe a card, or buy them some flowers. If you're tight on budget, you can pick a flower from the front, just like I said earlier, and surprise them with something that is symbolic to both of you, or more so to them. This list can go on forever. You get the point. Love language number four, acts of service. Wouldn't you agree that it's always nice to have things done for you? Coming home to a fresh cooked meal, or how about seeing a house or car that was cleaned while you were away without even asking? In some relationships, communication isn't always strong. And when people use acts of service as primary languages, they expect their partners to do certain things for them, sometimes without even asking. Some things like clean the dishes or change the baby's diapers when they're not even home. Take out the trash is also one of them. These are small little things that will really irk the person much more than others if they're not done for them. Typically, they usually feel a lingering sense of disappointment, frustration, until they can no longer take it and start to become vocal. So how can we fill these love tanks? Simply by step one, create a list of three things that you wish your partner would do for you. I wish that he or she did this and vice versa. And once you've gone through that, affirm that by doing certain things just like that is actually going to be the way they want to be loved. Affirm that each task is reasonable and doable. Allow for action to take place and then add one item at the end of a month. And by the end of this whole process, or by the end of the year, you'll have a giant list of things that will actually happen on their own and new habits will be formed. Something really important to remember is that there are different dialects. Just because you both appreciate to receive acts of service doesn't mean that you're always gonna get along. Not everything is gonna be buttercups, sunshines, and roses. There is still room for misunderstanding and communication is really key. How do you know if a person is loving you in the way that they want to be loved? You be caring, you ask them, 
and you say, am I doing this right? They're probably telling you yes or no. If, I mean, why wouldn't they? Requests can give love direction, but demands will stop the flow of love. And finally, love language number five, physical touching. Now, I know you're probably thinking these types of lovers probably just need one thing, sexual intercourse. But no, there is so much more to it. Kissing, holding hands, cuddling are all great ways to express love to these kind of people. Without them, they feel unloved to a much greater extreme than others. Don't make the mistake thinking that the way you like to receive pleasure is the same way that the person enjoys or likes to receive pleasure. And people be forewarned, if your partner has physical touch as a primary love language, nothing is worse than not holding them when they cry. If you want to keep this person's love tank full, here's a few important facts that you might want to keep at the top of your mind. Most sexual problems have little to do with good physical touch and techniques. They have more to do with meeting emotional needs and ensuring that healthy amounts of fuel are in the love tanks. Contrary to popular belief, not all men have physical touch as their primary language. If both men and women are emotionally satisfied, the sexual aspects tend to take care of themselves. And chances are that the way you love or express love is the way you want to receive it. So there you have it. You have just been equipped with an arsenal of tools that will help you create a perfect relationship with your current or future partners. To go over them again, words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. So how do you know a person's love language preference? You look at the way that they ask for love and that's probably what they really want. So I'm going to leave you today with five bonus truths. Truth number one, one thing is for sure, relationships won't be the same when you were going through that puffy love infatuation phase. Once that's over, things tend to change. Truth number two, love is a choice and cannot be coerced. Request for love and not demand it. Like dealing with a three-year-old, we have to give options to the other person to buy willingness and to build openness. And truth number three, People tend to criticize their partners loudly in the areas that they have the deepest emotional needs. And number four, feedback is the key for how to love a person fully. Just need to be cognizant of the different dialects of language. And finally, truth number five, if you want to truly forgive someone, know that love doesn't keep score or wrong. Love doesn't bring up past failures, and none of us are perfect. So if you truly want to be happy and be with that significant other, the one thing that we must all become proficient in is how to love them in the way that they want to be loved. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you in the next video. Later.